May God bless you today. I'm Pastor Billy Washington, Rose of Sharon Ministries. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes today to share with you the engrafted Word of God. But just before we pray, I'd like to say the title of the teaching this evening or today is Embracing the New Normal. Yes, I think we're all aware of our new normal that we're dealing with. And today's topic, we're going to just discuss embracing it because we want to cast all of our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're going to do on today through your word. We're praying that for the people of God that we may hide your word in our heart, that we may not sin against you. You said, study to show thyself approved unto you, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, let us go into your word and see what the spirit is saying to the church. So may God bless you as we go into this wonderful study. Foundational scripture is going to be found in the book of Genesis, the third chapter. If you have a chance, uh, if you have a Bible, would you turn there with us? The third chapter of the book of Genesis, verses 14, I might read through uh, verse 19 to 20. I don't know where I'm going to stop, but that's the general vicinity of the teaching today. It's centered around embracing the new normal. The first new normal humanity ever experienced was after Adam sinned. Then things changed between God and man forever. Yes, uh, he said, Adam, if you eat from that tree that sits in the midst of the garden, the day that you eat, you shall surely die. And the day that he ate, Adam's spirit man died and now when he communicates with God he does not communicate with God spirit to spirit for God is a spirit and they that worship him the Bible says must worship him in spirit and in truth but after Adam sinned he can no longer talk and communicate with God spirit to spirit because his spirit was dead so now he has to deal with God through his mind and he has a, a blurred uh, understanding of God because his heart is separated. So we're going to be blessed today, I believe, through the word of God to discuss embracing the new normals. And this is going to be treated like a Bible study, okay? In fact, we're going to go through the entire Bible in this series. Uh, we hope to have at least four teachings of this series entitled embracing the new normal. Now, the way we plan to approach it, just let me give you the outline. There are about, there are eight sections of the Bible that scholars have divided it into, okay? The Old Testament, four sections. The New Testament, four sections. The Old Testament consists of this. I'm just going to name them, and then we'll talk about them later on, but just to give you an idea of where this brother's coming from. Okay, just pretend that you're in, in a classroom. The four sections of the Old Testament are foundation, preparation, aspirations, and expectations. The foundation, written by Moses, you know all about it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They deal with the foundation of Christ. Then you go from foundation to preparation, which means they're trying to get that land that they're moving to sanctified. And to do that, they have to get rid of the enemies of the land. So you start with the book of Joshua, where there is a possession of the land. And then the next book is Judges, where there is an oppression by the land, because now the enemies are beating them up. Then there's the book of Ruth that deals with devotion. Then there's the book of 1 Samuel where there's stabilization. They got them a king. And then you go to 2 Samuel, where there is expansion. They got a greater king, the greatest king, David. Whooped all of the enemies. And then you go into the book of First Kings. So, you're dealing with glorification because Solomon ruled 
under a time of peace and prosperity from chapters 1 to chapter 11 that's glorification then when you get to chapter 12 to chapter 22 there's a division of the nations which led to a spiritual deterioration of the nations now don't want to lose you in all this teaching uh, I'm, I'm a little scholarly been studying a few years so I won't go I'll just stop at the book of 2 uh, Kings. 2 Kings, from chapter 1 to chapter 17, it deals with the deterioration of a nation. They're deteriorating uh, spiritually. So from chapter 18 to chapter 25, it deals with the deportation of the nations. Okay, Spiritual deterioration led to final deportation. Okay? That's what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to take you through the whole Bible. Of course, after the deportation, there was a restoration. That's where the book of Ezra and Nehemiah comes in. And then we cross over to the New Testament. There are four sections there. I'm going to name them and not elaborate on them much, but just to let you know where we're going. When we cross over to the New Testament, we're going to start off with the manifestations which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the manifestations of Christ, okay? Then we're going to deal with the propagations, where we get our word propaganda. That's the book of Acts, how the gospel, the propagation of the gospel went throughout the world, okay? So that's manifestation, there's propagation, and then the last two parts of the New Testament deal with the interpretations. That's the books that the apostles wrote that explains the things that Jesus did, what it really meant. And last but not least, there is the consummation written by John. We call him the Revelator, the book of Revelations. So the New Testament consists of manifestations, propagation, interpretation, and consummation. All right. I hope I've gotten your attention because we're in for a wonderful study of God's word. Because we must, if we're going to have peace like a river, joy, unspeakable joy and full of glory, we must embrace the new normal. Paul explained it like this, the book of Philippians. He said, I don't know about y'all, but I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. I've learned how to be a bound. I've learned how to be a base. So we're going to have to let God keep us in perfect peace, as Isaiah said. Y'all keep those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed upon me because they trust in me. Are you enjoying these words of exhortation? I hope so. Now we're going to get into the word of the teaching. Book of Genesis, the third chapter. Let's look at these new normals as they come on the scene. Starting with verse 14 of the third chapter of Genesis. I'm so ready. Thank you for being here. I'm excited. I'm excited. Here we go. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Listen to this new normal. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Listen. That was new. Before he was upright, but now the serpents, the snakes, they're crawling today, and they're eating dust today. Here's another new normal, the 15th verse. And I will put enmity between, thy, between thee and the woman, okay? And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's telling that serpent, the seed of the woman, which is a prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. When he comes, he's going to bruise the head, which means he's going to destroy him. But the serpent, the scripture says, is going to bruise his heel, which means there's going to be some temporary damage that the serpent is going to do. But the new normal is this. There's war between the species of humanity and the demonic world. <clears throat> this is why Paul said in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And he went on to say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a new normal. It's a new normal. And I'm going to slow it down and teach God's word, and I believe you're in for a treat. Let's look at the 16th verse now. And until the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. I don't know if you caught all of that, but he said, when he said, greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, he's talking about the sorrow after you conceive and attempt to give childbirth. He said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in pain that should bring forth children. That's a new normal. It's normal. As a matter of fact, uh, people have died trying to give childbirth. We have to embrace it and ask God to give us strength because he's able. But that's a new normal. Before then, it was implied that it would not be a tedious matter, possibly even a pleasurable matter. But now, with the new normal, he decreed it, declared it, and it's still going on today. Verse 17, and to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, listen to the new normal. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. It's normal for your jobs to be tedious. That's part of the punishment of the original sin. <clears throat> so we should embrace the tediousness of the jobs and ask God to strengthen us where we're weak, build us up where we're torn down, and he will bless us through his grace to renew our strength. But it's no use to go into work with an attitude because it's hard. It's part of the, of the consequences of the original sin. The 18th verse says, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. 19th verse, In the sweat of thy face, it's going to be normal, thou shalt eat bread till thou return to the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for thus thou art, and until the dust thou shalt return. We have to embrace death because death is a new normal. Hebrews explained it like this, the ninth chapter, verse 27. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Paul embraced death so much in the book of Philippians that he said, you know, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. Because he knew to be absent from this body in death meant to be present with the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I thank you for being with us today. We're just getting started. I hope I've whet your appetite enough for you to stay with the teaching today. And also, I'm going to make an offer to anybody that's listening today. Since we're dealing with the first books of the Bible, uh, the foundation and the preparation, well, Moses wrote the foundation. And anyone that will text in this answer to this question, here's the question. What was the last miracle that Moses wrote about? If you would text that in right now, you know, where it says comments, I hope you like the page, but if you hit like and then comments, tell me what the last miracle it was that Moses wrote, I mean, that Moses wrote or wrote about, you know, wrote or wrote about. All right, here we go. As we go through the book of Genesis, we're not going to cover every aspect, but we're going to look at some major things. And that those are the, some of the miracles. Miracle number one, 
the creation. Okay? Miracle number two. Enoch's translation. Yeah, the man walked with God until finally God took him at the age of 365. He just left here. Now that's not normal. All right. Creation. Enoch's translation. And then flood, uh, the third uh, miracle of the book of Genesis is the miracle of the flood. Yes. The Bible says that the windows of heaven are open and the fountain of the deep were broken and it flooded the whole world. Last but not least, there's the miracle of the divided languages. It brought about a new normal. You see, after the flood, humanity began all over again and began to multiply, okay? And humanity spoke the same language. But in the 11th chapter of the book of Genesis, there was a dividing of the languages because they were trying to the Tower of Babel to heaven, may I say, and God said we're going to have to come down and confuse their languages because if we don't confuse their languages, these people have united and they have united as one, and if we don't confuse their languages, there will be nothing they will not be able to do. Now just think about that. If they didn't know the Lord and God said that about them, what about us that know the Lord? What if we get together in the name of Jesus? What miracles and manifestations would God do? With that said, let me say this real quick. I thank God for Praise Center, one of our fellowship churches, pastored by none other than the Bishop Donald H. Butler. Uh, and then there is the uh, Repairer of the Breach, <laughs> Worldwide Ministry, pastored by none other than the Pastor Ronald Walker. And then there's the Rose of Sharon. The reason why I stopped to say that, we have three churches at one location. God has called us together, and our fellowship is our new normal until God sends us on our separate ways. Yes, we are embracing our new normal. Okay, we talked about some new normals and how that the ones that God enacted are still present today. Let me name one more in the book of Genesis, and then we're going to go from the foundation to preparation. Remember I said the book, the Old Testament, did, has to do with the foundation, preparation, aspirations, and the expectations. Well, today we're just going to deal with the foundation and the preparation. I'm going to deal with one more miracle in the foundational section of the Bible, and that is... It was a miracle of the closed wombs. What are you talking about, Pastor Washington? Well, Abraham was afraid when he went to Egypt because of the famine. Yeah, he didn't know how to adjust to the new normal. He didn't keep faith in God. He put faith in his ability to renew before himself. So he told his wife, we're not going to embrace this new normal. We're going to go to Egypt for some help. You see, the world needs to be coming for, to us for answers, but instead we're going to the world for answers. And God will use anybody, but we need to be praying. So he told his wife, Sarah, to tell the king that you are my sister instead of my wife. And when he took her in with the, probably going to make her one of his concubines or maybe one of his wives, God shut up the wounds of everybody there. And they noticed the cattle wasn't having calves. The women wasn't having children. And they come to a conclusion, maybe we've done something we have no business. And they found out that they had Abraham and Sarah were really husband and wife. And when they allowed them to be reunited, that new normal of no childbirth God overruled it and allowed them to be fruitful again. Then we can say, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can overrule this coronavirus and bless us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers, if he can get the church 
to turn and pray. Yes. Well, I could go further in the book of Genesis, but I think you're getting the gist of the teachings for the next weeks to come, uh, embracing the new normal. So far, we've come to the conclusion that we had in trouble communing with God, and it's normal now because of the sin of Adam. We're having trouble with childbirth, and that's normal now because of the sins of Eve. We're having trouble with relationship between husband and wife because that's part of the new normal. God told Eve, uh, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, and in pain shall you bring forth children, and your desire, Eve, shall be to your husband, but he shall rule over thee. The new normal is that, according to the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, that the husband is the head of the wife. Now, I know in this society that we got that all backwards now, but according to God, that's the new normal. He hasn't changed it yet. All right, am I doing pretty good? Well, let's move on further. Um, let's move over to the books of the preparations. A real important new normal took place when you cross over from the uh, foundational books, you know, uh, to the preparation books. Under the foundation books written by Moses, God worked miracles to sustain them, to keep them alive, okay? Because they were out in the wilderness, getting bit by snakes and things of that nature, running out of water and things of that nature. And God worked miracles to sustain them. And they, so they embraced those miracles. But after they got into the promised land, all of a sudden, those type of miracles ceased. What type of miracles? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Number one, the manna that used to grow out of the ground, it ceased to grow anymore. Uh, things of that nature. That was a new normal that had taken place. The miracles were no longer to sustain them, but the miracles that God would work once they got to the book of Joshua were not to sustain them, but the miracles were to advance them thank you to advance them in other words if you want God to work miracles in these days quit looking for him to do everything the way he did in yesteryears and find out what season you're in maybe he wants to work miracles to advance you and you're steady spending all your time asking him to bless you with this and bless you with that but the Bible says if you seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness all of this and all of that will be added to you. So in this season, God wants to work miracles to advance us. We need to be the head and not the tail. We need to be above only and not beneath. We need to be the lender and not the borrower. So in the name of Jesus, I want to commend you to the Lord. And if you take care of God's business, I can promise you through the word of God, he will take care of your business. Now, we've left the foundational books, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now we're in the preparation books, which deals with Israel's national life. First, Norm is the miracles that they used to have have ceased. Uh, the Bible says that they wore the same clothes for 40 years. Their feet didn't swell. Okay? He let them walk in supernatural health. But now, in this new dispensation, uh, he did not feed them supernaturally. They had to go out and hunt. And they had to go out and farm for a living. I'm only talking about embrace the new norm. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, let me explain something to you about revelation. Whenever God gives you a revelation, he intends for you to take it in and then do a demonstration by faith. He showed them the promised land and that was a revelation 
but their faith wanted, was supposed to explore the land. And the demonstration would be this. Moses says, if you go over there and take the land that God has promised to you, he's going to work miracles to advance you. What miracles? Well, miracle number one, one of you will be able to chase a thousand. Two of you will be able to chase 10,000. What are you saying, Pastor Washington? I'm saying that if all God's people will get together with one accord, there's no secret with what God will do. Well, I think I'm about halfway through with this teaching on this evening. So let me go ahead and guide you on through the preparations. Here we go. The book of Joshua, there is a possession of the land. The new norm was one of us chase a thousand. Two of us chase 10,000. They went from the book of Joshua to the book of Judges. So they went from possession to oppression. So the new norm now is win some battles, lose some battles. Because he told them when they go over there, don't compromise with the enemy. And as long as you don't compromise with the enemies, you'll be more than conquerors. But if you compromise with the enemies, then they're going to be thorns in your flesh. So the new normal was this. I'm not going to drive the enemy out. You're going to have to live with them. And the way you know you're pleasing to me, you will be advantageous in battle, although you won't drive them out. And when you're not pleasing me, they're going to make slaves out of you. You see, this is how we know today. If you are a slave to sin, it's only because you're not pleasing the Lord and he cannot have fellowship with sin. But guess what? Satan certainly can. Let's move on. So we went from possession to oppression. Let, let, let me describe the oppression. Here's the way it worked. They would get salvation. And once they got salvation, they get happy. And then they go from salvation to sin. And when God would see the sin, he would let them go into slavery. And because of slavery, then they would begin to have supplication. So it started with salvation. Then they went to sin. Then they went to slavery. Then they went to supplication. And that was the book of the book of Judges. It just slowly, 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 slowly declined until finally they got to the book of Samuel. And this is when they asked God, or demanded of God, really, to get them a king. Well, the new norm for a king is simply everything he says you have to do. And if he's walking with the Lord, you're going to have a wonderful time. But if he backslides, you're going to have a terrible time. Because, you know, Jeremiah said that the heart of man is desperately wicked and full of evil imagination. Saints and friends, I'll close with these remarks concerning the preparation. Okay? There was a carried away captive of Israel in 722 BC. Ten tribes were carried away captive and they knew Norm was to live away from their homeland being sold all over the world. All right. The same thing happened to the other part of Israel that was called Judah. They were carried away captive and their new norm was to live in the land of Babylon for the next 70 years. But thank God for the prophet Jeremiah. He wrote a letter to the Jews in Babylon, a famous verse that we quote periodically. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11. They were over there in despair, but Jeremiah wrote the letter and it says, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. And there are plans not to harm you, but to bring to you, bring you to an accepted end. And so God wants to bless us today. Uh, we're in a day of the COVID-19 bringing and given in marriage, earthquakes in diverse places. 
wars and rumors of wars. It even mentioned the word pestilence, which refers to diseases that would be rampant in these days. So we definitely are in the last days, according to the signs, the pandemic, whatever's going on. Now we have the facts, you know, we have news, but we need to have the truth, which is whatever God says about it. God told me to tell you, and the reason why I say he told me to tell you because it's in the Bible. You can always say what the Bible says, and that's God talking. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. I have plans to prosper you, plans of peace, and to do you no harm. So what we want to do is be not weary in well-doing, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Sisters and brothers, may God bless you today. Thank you for tuning in to this teaching, embracing the new normal. Uh, let us put, cast all our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. And God is a God that's full of mercy. The Bible says mercy is everlasting and it's truth endured unto all generations. So let us confess let us acknowledge what's going on in the world and practice social uh, distancing and things of that nature. But just like we cooperate with the government and do things decently in an order, let us also, as never before, turn our hearts, minds to the Lord and seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. The Bible said, let the wicked forsake his ways. And the ungodly man his thoughts and turn unto the Lord. So may God bless you today. Embrace the new normal. Tell God all about it. And he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Until we meet again, this is Pastor Billy Washington saying, see you next week. <laughs>